Hello everyone and welcome to the PILS Automation Safety Training on the PILS PDP Decentralized Input Modules. My name is Ben Harper and I'm the National Sales Manager for PILS and our training today will be presented by one of our Senior Sales Engineers, Chris Ondick. As a reminder, this is part five of a 15-part series of trainings we will be presenting on PILS products and services as well as some coverage of safety standards. I hope you'll all plan on attending the full series of these trainings and I hope that they will prove to be valuable to you in learning more about machine safety and how PILS can help you achieve your overall machine safety goals. I'll mention briefly that servers for all online meetings have been quite taxed in recent weeks. Should we experience any technical difficulties during the presentation, I'll simply restart the meeting and you can all rejoin at that time. Chris would then be, uh, pick up where he left off and begin the training again. With that, I'll hand it over to Chris Sondick to begin our presentation. Chris? Thanks, Ben. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, coming out and joining this training. Um, as Ben said, we're going to focus on our PDP system, which is our uh, decentralized IO block. And um, so with that, we will uh, go ahead and get started. Um, as far as questions are concerned, I'm pretty sure Ben will be handling any sort of messages that come in during the presentation. Uh, but if not, at least Ben and myself will hang around at the end um, to answer any uh, additional questions. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, we'll start off just kind of a, a brief overview of what the PDP system is. Uh, we're really going to stay at kind of that 10,000 foot view for this presentation, not get into kind of the nitty gritty and technical, uh, more just cover some of the features, some of the benefits you'd be seeing. Um, so the PDP system has been around since the early 2000s. Um, it uses a proprietary safe protocol to communicate safe IO. Um, from four sensors per block. Um, and you can see on the left there, it started off with two different blocks. Uh, we have our standard block and then the high-powered block. Um, we'll get into the high-powered one a little bit more, um, but just uh, know that PDP is still evolving, still adding new parts to it. Um, what it's really allowing you to do is create kind of a, a system and opportunities for, for complete systems. Uh, so. In general, we know there's a lot of different remote I.O. systems out there, and, and people have a lot of kind of preconceived uh, notions and perceptions about them. Um, in general, we're hearing, yep, the, the real positives are remote I.O. systems simplify your wiring, um, and they really make commissioning easier. Um, they make things a bit simpler as far as install. Um, but then, you know, you also hear a lot of times about any sort of remote I.O. systems that you got to measure the cables out every time. The components can be expensive, and that kind of cuts into the savings you get from the saving on wiring time, um, as well as components tend to have a longer lead time um, with not that much additional functionality because they're specially designed. Um, so we know that's the general thoughts on, on I.O. systems or remote I.O. systems. Um, so we want to make sure that we're covering how with our PDP system, uh, we haven't fallen into some of those same traps um, that some of the other ones have, have fallen into. So let's start off with, with the PDP and some of the main benefits that you'd be getting from it. Um, everything's going to be M12 quick disconnect, uh, so your wiring is really reduced to seconds. You're not landing a bunch of individual wires anymore. It's just all M12 quick disconnect. Um, you don't need any extra hardware or anything special um, out in the field to commission it. Um, you can actually just use any M12 cables that you might already have. Um, so you could use ours. If you already have cables you know and love and really like and you have in stock, you can use those. It's not specialty cabling, um, which is a really big advantage in my mind in that you don't have to worry about any sort of proprietary cable. Um, just drop an M12 in and you're good. Um, you're getting more space in your main cabinet. Uh, as you can see on the picture uh, on the left there, that in the cabinet you're going to have the controller and the link module. And then all of your PDP blocks, you see the three of them in a string together there, are out in the field. So you're really saving on that cabinet space. Um, you're also going to be getting a lot better diagnostics. Um, you have your uh, LEDs on the block, on the sensor, and back in the cabinet on the relay. So you're getting a lot of different ways to diagnose and view the system. Um, and as far as some kind of additional benefits we have there at the bottom as well. Um, you're using one cable 
for communication and the supply for power for all of them. Um, I think that's another really big advantage in that you're not running all those extra cables like we talked about some other systems you would need. Um, and then of course, the saving as far as design and planning because of how simple that insulation is gonna be. Um, and with these being IP67, you can get the blocks wet. They can go in most types of environments. So you don't have to worry about putting J boxes or anything out uh, in the field. You can just put this block, land your M12 cables, and you're, you're good to go. So what's that really all doing for you? You know, how's the PDP system then, then really helping you? Well, it's helping you with performance level calculations. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Uh, because it's all just single point connections. Uh, there are, in fact, and we make unique sensors adapted to work with the system. We'll talk about some of them in a bit more detail. Um, and then any type of evaluation device can be used. Uh, so whether it's a passive device or a PDP device. Um, and then some of the other main advantages, say over something like doing series wiring, is you're getting individual diagnostics on each of those sensors. So on each block, you're getting diagnostics for each sensor, as opposed to, you know, doing normal type series wiring, where all you know is that it's one of the sensors in that string. Um, it's just giving you more information. So you're taking some of those components you already have and getting just more information and making it easier to diagnose and, and fix the system should something go wrong, um, as opposed to just making it simpler to set up. Um, and then the communication, which you see on the bottom there, all takes place via uh, safe data link. So um, everything on the system um, will meet the, the safety standards that you need. Uh, so in general, the system is making things simpler, um, making them easier, but also giving you additional data and additional information. Um, so we want to get into a little bit more of what else is involved in, in PDP here, um, and that PDP is, is still evolving and we're still adding to it. You saw those first uh, two blocks. We had the standard block and the high powered. Um, this is a new block that we launched uh, in 2018. It's a lower cost version. Um, it's the plastic um, threading instead of metal or instead of the stainless steel. So for systems that you don't need to worry about the environment at all, um, we have solutions for that as well. Um, and we really wanted to focus on making sure that we answered some of those questions people have about remote IO systems and that the components can be very expensive. Well, we're making sure we take that out. Um, you're also getting additional functionality out of some of our other components you might already have. Um, so something like on our multi two platform, the MB0, the MB1, um, it just allows them to have more expansion. So you're just getting more out of something you might already be familiar with and might already be using. Um, and I think that's another pretty big advantage um, that, that provides a lot of value for anyone who wants to use the system in that you're not having to learn anything new. Uh, you're taking the same cabling that you've already used, the same controller if you're already using our multi-controller, and just getting more from it. Um, and again, there's just a nice little picture here in the middle that shows how the system is saving you a lot on that cabinet space and just giving you more out from less with a very little bit of um, cabinet where it's just the link module and the controller, everything else out in the field. Um, so how is that adding value to, to both sides of the system? You know, I've, I've been saying it's adding value other than just that wiring time. What is it, what is it really doing for you? Well, as far as the PNOS side of the system is concerned, um, really giving you capabilities that not many other safety systems are going to provide. Um, by having that additional diagnostics on a smaller system, we're also enabling small and medium-sized machine builders and small and medium-sized machines to get a lot of those benefits that you're usually only going to find on a much larger control system. Um, so without having to go to a full safety PLC, you're getting diagnostics on the sensors, on the blocks, in the cabinet and you're expanding the amount of IO you can bring in by a ton. Um, I'm going to go into the actual amount of IO come up in a little bit, um, but it's really just allowing people that and companies that are building smaller machines to 
really benefit from all things out there that, you know, on the safety side. Um, and when we talk about the sensors and the additional uh, value you're getting there, some of our sensors that you might already be using when you're connecting to PDP, you're getting those better diagnostics, you're getting the quicker install, it's simpler wiring. So not only on that additional or that initial machine build, but after it's in the plant and you're having to perform any sort of maintenance, you're not having to reland wires. You know, say someone hits and breaks the door lock there or a light curtain, you're not rewiring up a light curtain, you're plugging in one M12 cable. Um, so it's value not only in your initial design and build, but you're really getting a lot of time saving and value throughout the life of the machine and the system as well. Um, so it's, it's gonna help you throughout the whole, again, life of that product. Um, some of the biggest things that, that we've seen here are when you are building a machine, when you have to break it down after you do your runoff and you know, you're know you bringing it to a customer, well, how long does it take to pull every wire, break the whole machine down and put it back together when you get to the customer site? You're saving all that time by being able to just have this link module and a PDP block and just an M12 quick disconnect on it. So it's really helping in a lot of different aspects of your machine build or your machine you have in your plant when you need to perform any sort of maintenance on it. Um, now getting into what kind of I think matters the most to everybody or what are the full capabilities? So what can you really do with this system? Can it work for what you're building or what you need to do in your plant? Well, how many cards can you connect to just one multi? You can actually put four of the link modules to the left of our multi. Um, you see in the picture here, that's just one. You can go up to four. Each one of those modules is going to hold four blocks. Uh, we only put three in the picture, but you see that final string running out, that final cable. You can actually get up to four and you can use any sort of mix, whether you want to put, you know, you need a high power block, like in this photo with a couple of the standards, you want to mix in the new low cost block as well. Um, it's really allowing you to design it to fit your needs. Um, so that being said, as far as those total blocks, you're looking at 16 blocks off of one multi, which gives you 64 total sensors that can come back to the multi system. Um, I know my first thought was don't necessarily need 64 safe sensors on, on a given machine. You can take standard IO back as well. Um, so this is really designed to be able to just, like I've said throughout so far, simplify your machine design and your machine build and allow you to set it up in whatever way is gonna work best for you. Um, one of the real big advantages as well is you don't have to go one card with four blocks, then a second card with four more blocks. Um, you can lay this out in whatever way works for your machine design. Uh, so if it works better for you to have one link module with two blocks and that handles the left half of your machine, and then have a second link module with two blocks off of that to handle the right half of your machine, you can do that. There's no set way that we're gonna make you a to fill out that first entire link module before you can move to the next one. Um, it's really open to what's going to fit best for you um, and again allows you to really design the system to fit your needs. Um, I'm going to be covering even more information on here but for those of you who like to do some of your own research kind of like me um, you can find all this information on our website as well. You'd be going under products and industries then to controllers, then decentralized field devices. Um, so there will be a lot more information there for people who wanna look on their own, but we're gonna continue on going over some more of what the PDP system can give you um, right here, right now. Just wanted to make sure everyone knew they could find this information in other places as well. This is the only technical slide that I am gonna show today. Um, we're gonna cover it just very briefly. Um, I thought it was very important that everyone would have this here as a reference for if you guys want to go back and take a look at how the wiring does work on the PDP system. Most importantly, is that bottom left corner there is that you're landing only nine wires. 
for your PDP system. The five wires are your connection to the block, and then four wires are for power, the device card, and the sensor string. Um, anything in any more detail, getting more technical, um, your, your sales engineer would be happy to review it with you. Um, but just want to put it here for if anyone wants to go back and rewatch this on the YouTube channel afterwards and take a look at some of this wiring, the information is in here for, for you to be able to, to reference. So let's talk about when you're using the PDP system, kind of how you get started. Um, the main thing that we're going to say here is, one, how much power are you actually getting? And then how does that power get distributed across those blocks? Um, so from your 24 volt DC power supply connected to that first link card, you're gonna be getting four amps to the first four sensors. Um, so what we like to tell everybody is you really wanna start off by determining what you're gonna connect to this system. If you start off knowing, all right, I have 10 sensors, each one is gonna take this much draw, you can then work back to design that system and how it's gonna work for you. If that means three of these standard blocks here, you're good. If you realize that that four amps isn't enough, then you know in your design phase, let me mix in a high powered block. That the main advantage, that high power block, is that you can run an additional uh, uh, line of 24 volt DC power to then power up all the sensors on there. So you're not gonna be really getting limited by power consumption it just is gonna affect which block you need to pick. Um, so it goes back to that we wanted to keep this PDP system as simple as possible and be able to fit any type of machine design, whether that's one card with one block and four sensors, or if that's going to be all four cards, 64 sensors, high power blocks on all of them because you're taking tons of draw using you know, bigger, bigger sensors. Um, so the good place to start, take a look at what you're gonna connect, and then you work back from there to make your decisions on what kind of cards you would then need. Um, as far as sensors, you know, we're saying any you know, sensors that can be connected, that we have some design to work for the system. You see here, these are our um, codes, as well as our s -lock. Um We actually have sensors that are specifically designed to work with the PDP system. So they were made with PDP in mind. Um, any sensor that has an N classification, as you can see in that highlighted section on, um, when you go to our website, those are made to work in conjunction with the PDP system. But it's not just these sensors. <laughs> Wouldn't really be the best system in the world if all we could put were, you know, a few of the RFID codes and the s lock So as much as these are all really good sensors that are going to go on there, what else can, can PDP add? How else can it help you? Well, we know light curtains are big for everybody. We got you covered. Light curtains can connect into the PDP system as well. I know when it comes to wiring, at least for me, light curtains were always the most frustrating because they always had the most wires. And so what you're gonna do here and what this slide is really telling you is that not only can our light curtains work with the PDP system, but any device that is capable of five pin wiring is gonna work on PDP. Um, so that's our sensors that are five pin, that's anybody else's sensors that are five pin. If you can get that wiring and you can get that N12 quick disconnect, you can plug it into PDP. Um, of course, I'm gonna recommend using Phil's products to connect back into it um, for a few reasons. Uh, one, we make some really awesome products for anyone who's been on the other trainings we've been doing already, um, you've heard about our light curtains. I know we referenced the PDP system during our, our light curtain presentation a week ago. Um, our our S-lock there, our codes, they're all going to be a very good sensor, so I wanna recommend them. Um, two, like I showed on the previous slide, we have sensors that are actually designed to work with PDP, um, so that's gonna keep it easiest um, and just keep it really simple for you. Um, and three, um, as you guys all heard in the beginning, Ben's the one who introduced this call, and he is my boss, so I'm going to go ahead and recommend everything pills all day long when Ben can hear it, so I keep him happy. Um, that being said, getting into a little bit more of 
our light curtains you see here, um, we have both the slimline light curtains that you can connect with some field wiring, um, or our Op 2s are actually designed to connect to a single port, no field wiring necessary. Uh, Rick did a really good job talking about our light curtains on the previous presentation. Um, and this is kind of what he was alluding to as far as connecting them to the PDP. But as I just mentioned, you know, we're trying to keep this simple. So you don't even have to field wire if you don't want to. Uh, for our slimline light curtains, we actually have an adapter that's going to let you take them directly into the PDP system. Um, it's all just going with that we really want to make sure that adopting and using PDP isn't going to make you learn anything new. It's going to keep it as simple as it can. And we're going to make sure that it's a real benefit in every aspect of your machine build to use our PDP, even something just as far as getting an adapter already made so that you can connect light curtains you might already be using to our PDP without having to worry about changing up your wiring or anything else like that. Um, but if you don't need the slim line, the simplest solution is going with our OP2 light curtains. Um, the way the OP2 light curtains can actually work is you can either plug them in specifically to uh, each port, so whether that's port X1, X2, X3, X4, um, one, uh, stack in each one, or we actually have this adapter where both pigtails, um, so both light curtains from that one set, are going to go into one port. Um, the main advantage of that is it's going back to how big of a system you can put together using these PDP blocks. Uh, so four sets of light curtains are coming back to one block, and so that's just helping you keep it simple. I mean, if you look on that, that means 64 light curtains could be run off of one PDP system. Um, we really wanted to make sure that you could have any type of system, whether it's all those light curtains or from a simplicity standpoint, kind of a standard machine. If you're looking at a light curtain, uh, a code as far as it's, uh, to put on a door and maybe an e-stop. Well, you can wire up the light curtain into X1 and X2 the e-stop into three and the code into four. And then if for some reason you have to change that machine design, we, again, we wanted to keep it simple. You can then get that adapter, move both those light curtains onto just one port and add that extra e-stop or that extra code, whatever else you had to put in um, without having to redesign your system. You're just, you know, putting one little adapter on. Speaking of e-stop, to me, this is probably one of the biggest advantages you can get with the PDP system, and that's that we have e-stops that are pre-wired for quick disconnect. Um, I know e-stops are a part of every machine, and as much as they're a very common product, they're also a very time-consuming product. You know, e-stops are normally being hardwired. You normally have to cut into the metal to figure out how you want to mount them. And so as much as they're very common, it's taking you a lot of effort to use them. Um, you're going through on, you know, it's just taking a lot as far as wiring time. It's usually three separate wiring paths, all that time mounting. Well, you can see on the left here, these are all designed with the quick disconnect and with PDP in mind. Um, everything from your standard e-stop that's there on the top left, a slimmer design um, if it has to fit into a given machine, even do an e-stop with um, LED. So we're we're just kind of, I, I want to keep make sure I'm focusing on that message of we really wanted to simplify and, and save time, um, even on things that aren't the wiring, like the mounting side of things, by making sure that every part of your system can come back to PDP. And be able to, to work in the way that, that you need it to. Um, to keep with the keeping everything as simple as we can and making everything work in a way that you're already used to, um, anyone who's used our multi um, or who's on the multi presentation is very familiar with this screen on the bottom left here. Uh, that's our multi configurator. So 
when you're using PDP, you're not learning anything new. You don't have to have any sort of different type of, of software or learn a new way to set anything up. Um, you're going to go ahead and open up the multi configurator and you're going to program it same as you would if you weren't using PDP. The only difference is this picture on the right here, you're going to add a PDP link module. Um, so you see on the far right, that's a picture of our multi. And then all I did was open up connection module and select the uh, PDP link. Uh, when you select that, it's automatically going to add the PDP block down there for you. Um, and then you just get to make the decision of do you need to make that the high powered block and you leave it as the standard block. That's up to you. You can then continue to add up to the four blocks uh, per link card. Um, the main note I put there on the left is did you label them? Um, one of the main reasons I leave that in here is when you can add so many different cards and blocks onto the system, we wanted to make sure that it wouldn't be confusing. Uh, you'll be able to change, say that first block you can see there, you can label that as say link one, block one, so that when you're, you know, if you put three to four link modules and each one of them has three blocks on it, you don't have to remember just one through 12 you can name and just make it easier for you to be able to go through and set this up and program down the line. Um, so the real takeaway I wanna make sure everyone has, has got from this training is that there's a lot of options when it comes to PDP, that it's designed to work with not only our sensors, but sensors from other companies as well if they can fit that five pin quick disconnect, um, if it's something you already have, that it's that overall simplicity. Um, it's being able to get additional data, additional diagnostics, and not have to learn additional ways to do things. Um, and that the PDP system is really just a, a nice and simple way um, that's not going to add a lot of cost to your machine uh, to go ahead and, and get you some of that kind of higher level type safety information without having to go to a much higher level system. Um, with that, um, you know, I really want to say thanks to everyone who, who came out and, and listened here today. I hope we got you some valuable information while avoiding a lot of the, the technical. Um, again, I'm happy to go over more technical with anyone if they want to hang around and ask some more uh, questions. Um, but I'll pass it back to Ben, and uh, thank you guys for joining. Um, happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. Go enjoy your uh, lunchtime margaritas. Ben, back to you. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Good job. Uh, a lot of good information there. Uh, again, if you'd like any additional information on the PDP decentralized input modules, uh, feel free to reach out to your local sales engineer or your distributor. If you're not sure who that is, please uh, reach out to our inside sales team at inside sales at pillsusa.com uh, or they can be reached uh, on the phone at 734-354-0272. Thanks, everybody, for your time, and I hope everyone has a great day.